Hello and welcome to the 8th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. This tutorial we'll be covering creating some segments and we'll create some code which will allow us to place our segments further along the way. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll find all the assets and scripts to this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, the ultimate goal of all of this game is to allow ourselves to infinitely generate all of this, so as our character can keep running and running and running and running until they end, restart, or choose a different level. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create segments or sections. So we currently have this cube, which serves as the ground base for our first segment. And this is where our character starts. Some of our assets do look a little bit big. They look like they're too big, but don't worry about that at all. It's something we can modify a little later on. First things first, what we need to do is we need to create multiple segments. Now, for the purposes of being quick, I'm only going to create two extra segments, but you can create more. Um, we're not going to do everything in this tutorial because it takes a lot of understanding and a lot of work to actually get everything functioning. But what we're going to do is get the basics of generating those segments. So first and foremost, we need to encompass everything we've got into one single segment. So let's go to game object and create empty. I want to make sure that the position for this game object is 0, 0, 0, and it needs to be dead center of our scene as opposed to everything else right now. What that means is that we can now drag and drop everything within this area into this game object, which I'm actually going to name as section. In fact, no, we'll call it segment. Because it's not really a section, it's a segment of the game, isn't it? So make sure your game object is segment, make sure it's at position 0, 0, 0, and then drag and drop everything that is relevant into that segment. So basically everything that isn't the uh, player and everything that isn't like a light or something. So let's take these. So I'm holding the shift key and I'm going to drag and drop them into segment and then take the anything else you've got and drop it into there. And the same with the rock as well. So now all we should have if we press the arrow there and close it up is a light, Timmy and the segment. And if we were to turn this segment off, it would disappear. So literally all we've got now is a light and our character. So let's turn that back on. So the aim of what we're trying to do here is we're going to duplicate this section. So if I hold control, press D and drag it to round about there, you can now see how we would create those segments one after the other. And what that does mean is that in order to kind of gauge the difference between these two segments, I'm actually going to quickly create this segment to look a little bit different. So I'm going to open that up again. I'm going to go to my tree, hold control, press D to duplicate it and just move the tree here, rotate it by 90 degrees. I'll take this rock as well. Hold control, press D, and I will duplicate it here. I'm going to remove this crate that we will eventually get round to. Uh, let's get another rock. Uh, hold control, press D, duplicate. Again, all of this is something that you can do as and when you need to in your own version of this. I'm just kind of making changes to this section so as we can visibly see that the sections are indeed different. So let's put that there. OK, so that is my second section and I'm going to create another section. So hold control, press D once again and drag it out uh, here. That should do round about there just so we can see the difference. Uh, I'm going to let's see what can I do with this one to make it look different again. Let's duplicate this rock, bring it over here. And as I say, you should take way more time than what I'm doing. I'm just rushing things along here when really I shouldn't. Uh, but like I say, for the effect of being quick, that's what we do. So I now have three sections which do look different from one another. We can distinguish between them. And what I'm going to do, it may seem counterintuitive at this point, but do not worry, it will make sense as we get further into the series. Each of these segments are going to be called segment. Like so. So 
how do we actually make this so as these appear in the correct place? Well, we could easily just turn them off and then create a script that turns them on, but that is no good. What we actually need to do is we need to make sure that these segments appear in the correct timing at least. So what we'll do is we're going to set up that script to make them literally appear on screen after a certain amount of time. And that will be the fundamental part of the script that will allow us to then generate them further and duplicate them. So what we need to do is put this first section, it should be 000. This segment should be 0050. And this one should be 00100. And I'm now going to turn off those two segments. So now we're back to our original segment. So next thing to do is let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this segment generator. If I can spell it right. And open that up in Visual Studio. And like I say, what we'll be doing in this tutorial is just putting in some basic fundamentals to make our level appear. And the coding that we use in this particular script, we are going to adjust later on. It is more the timing at this uh, present moment more than anything. So let's get rid of um, void update. We don't need that. Um, we don't need the annotation. But what we do need is a coroutine. A coroutine is a way of being able to have like a function or a method that allows you to also stop time or wait for things or do things like that. So, for example, if we want to wait for two seconds, we can't do that in void star. It would have to be a coroutine. A coroutine starts with I enumerator and we'll call it sec uh, segment gen, G E N. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, as you start this, you will see that the name of the coroutine is underlined in red. Don't worry about that. The reason about that is basically because we don't have a line that says yield. We, we're not waiting at this point. So if we put here, yield, return new, wait for seconds, and we'll just put five. In fact, no, we'll put 10 because we want this to last a little bit longer. So what that means is that we are going to wait for 10 seconds before we do anything. But what are we going to do here? Well, we need to add our first segment. So to do that, we will say in the uh, just above void start, we'll say public game object. And we'll call this segment map 01 semicolon. And we'll do the same again. You can see it's highlighted uh, the gray there. So I'm going to tab through that, make it quicker rather than type everything out again, because it's kind of understanding what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm actually going to tab it a few times because we are going to have some more parts of the map. So I'll just do seven for now. I'm not going to use them in this tutorial, but if you've already got seven pieces, that's fine. So what do we do? Well, after 10 seconds, we want to turn the segment map two on. So we'll say segment map zero two dot set active and in brackets true. And then next one, you can already see it is predicting what we need to do, but we don't want to do it straight away. So this telling us that this is what it thinks the next line of code should be. You can see it's highlighted gray there. That isn't true. We need to wait another amount of time before we set map three on. So let's do yield. You can see it's already got it there for us. Return new, wait for seconds 10. So I'm going to wait for 10 seconds again. And then now it's predicting the correct thing. So we can tab that again and have it say segment map 03.set active crew. So how do we start this particular bit of code? Well, to do it, we have to go to void start and say uh, start co routine and in brackets the name of our co routine which is segment gen and then open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so let's go over what is actually happening with this script we are starting to declare our sections of our map of our level 
we're starting a routine that says, yes, we want to start adding these bits in. So it does indeed do that. After 10 seconds, it does the next bit. After 10 more seconds, it does the next bit as well. Now, it's worth noting that when we get around to modifying this script even further, it does mean that we'll already have multiple sections laid out ahead of us. We'll just have to generate further into the level. For all intents and purposes, for this particular tutorial, we just want to be able to start displaying these new segments and have those segments ready. So what we need to do now is game object, create empty. I'm going to have this as level controls. And I'm going to drag and drop that script onto level controls. Now, it is worth noting that if you have any problems with this, this script, if you go to the pinned comment or to the description, there will be a link to where you can get this script for free. So all we need to do is add segment one, segment two, and segment three. Now, I know we don't refer to four, five, six, or seven, or even one in this script. So don't worry about actually applying any variable object there. Because we never reference it in the script, apart from the variable declaration, the script will not error out. It'll function just fine. So if we press play now, what will happen is we will run for 10 seconds, and then the next section will generate. And Timmy's running is a bit slow, so I may increase his speed at some point. We should see any second. The next section appear. There we go. So for all intents and purposes, like I say, we've got our generation going. And what it means is that in the future when we develop more, we won't see these new segments being generated because they'll be too far ahead of us. They'll be hidden. So it won't look as bold as that, as you know, everything coming into view. So I think I am going to increase Timmy's speed. He is a little bit slow. So let's go into this script. And let's change Timmy's speed to... How fast should we have him? Let's triple his speed. Let's say six and then see how that looks. So head back to Unity. If you want to keep it as two, that, that's absolutely fine. You know, it's your game at the end of the day. You can have him however fast or slow you want. So let's see how this looks now. Hopefully it should be faster. Well, I say hopefully. Well, of course it'll be faster. But you're not faster. Why are you not faster, Timmy? Is he already set as two? He is. So let's change him to six. Yeah, I think that's a better speed. So he's six in the script. Let's change it six on the variable and let's save our project there. So next Torah, what we're going to do is we are going to randomize which segment appears and we will generate them infinitely. So what that means is the script we've written, although fundamental, will be heavily modified so as we can generate to infinity the random segments. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I will see you next time.